Right, it's a few weeks since we have had a grapevine, uh, which is our little occasional series of telling you about a little bit of the news and events and things that are going on in the world of Beaver Parish. So first thing to tell you on the grapevine this week is this coming Thursday for the first reappearance of Lunch Bunch. So uh, Lunch Bunch involves there is a service at 11... 30, 11.30, he said with complete confidence, uh, there is a short service followed by at around about 12-ish or whenever the service ends, uh, followed by lunch and a guest speaker talking about uh, the wonders of this lovely ship. Titanic, as you know, is one of my great obsessions and interests, so I will. Janice has instructed me to keep to 10 minutes. So uh, let's, let's just see if I can keep myself to 10 minutes on Thursday afternoon, telling you a little bit about the Titanic, not just about the Titanic, but actually my favorite part of the story, building the ship. And these guys, I always think in those old black and white photographs, isn't it amazing to see those tiny little figures looking up in awe at this incredible thing that they have built. So if you want to hear more about that, this Thursday, half 11 for the service, 12 for lunch, uh, and a little talk afterwards. We will see you there. Next, on the grapevine, we are going to talk about war. Now, war uh, can sometimes be a good thing. You can have, as Eric will happily tell you, we all know best movies in the entire history of moviedom, the Star Wars trilogy. Um, another thing where wars are kind of good. Does anyone remember this program? Shout out if you recognize this theme tune. No? Robot Wars? Did uh, nobody else watch Tea Time every day? Little robots, little, ah, uh, Carson, I knew you'd like it. Little remote controlled robots smashing into each other. So, you know, Star Wars is good. Robot Wars is good. But here in Beaver, we have a series of our own which, oh, it just puts them all to shame. And it is called... Sunflower Wars. Because, yes, Helen knows what I'm talking about. You might remember that months ago, oh, when was it? Way, way back in the dark days of lockdown, um, we kept sending you out little gifts um, we, oh, we delivered bookmarks and fridge magnets and all kinds of things. Um, but one of our gifts delivered to your doors when we were all stuck at home uh, was a little packet of sunflower seeds, which we were all encouraged to plant back in those dark days of lockdown with that thought that as the sunflowers start to blossom and grow and climb up into the sunshine, that it would be a kind of symbol of what we were hoping and praying would come in the weeks and months to come. Who all planted their sunflower seeds? Wave, wave a hand. Okay, keep your hand up if your sunflower seeds blossomed. Oh, okay, not bad, not bad. Right, well, sunflower wars is what I have noticed happening over these last couple of weeks as the sunflowers have really started to kind of, um, kind of go for broke. Um, I have noticed that on the Beaver Parish Facebook page, there's a little bit of competition going on. So... Some of us, Ruth Patton, have posted the picture of our sunflowers bursting into life. Uh, and when I saw that picture, I kind of thought, you know, the battle has been won. Surely that is the most, like from that tiny little seed that we received through our letterboxes uh, all those months ago, surely that is the most impressive sunflower that can have uh, resulted. But last week, hello Hamiltons. <laughs> Did anyone else see this? So first of all, we saw the beanstalk itself growing up towards the sky. And then last week, the flower kind of finally appeared on the beanstalk, uh, on the most giant sunflower that I have ever seen in my life. So shall we give a round of applause? <laughs> to the victors of sunflower wars. <laughs> um, the Bennett's sunflower, it might um, possibly, you know, I'm not complaining, not moaning, but I think we maybe just got a shell rather than a seed. Is that possible? Uh, oh, I'm seeing some nods around the congregation. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So, you know, some of, some of us were off to a loser right from the very, very start. 
but uh, incre oh, incredible, incredible. All of those, who, uh, those of you who got them to blossom, uh, absolutely amazing. And kind of an awesome thing, isn't it, to think this was planted, what, how long, was it six months ago? It was, a, well, it, yeah, it was Easter time. So just amazing to think how much has changed in the world, as in our sunflowers, over these last couple of months. Now, next thing happening in the grapevine, what's coming next? Oh, yes. Right, we're going now from war to water. War to water. I thought that kind of worked. Uh, so have you heard we have a new rooftop sort of infinity pool uh, on the roof of Beaver Parish? Um, so you can just imagine, oh, just imagine sitting here just, you know, with a little glass of wine, just looking out over the sunset, over the Belfast Hills. But as you can maybe tell, this pool was not supposed to be here. Uh, the drains had got blocked. And so listen out now, see if you can turn it up here. Oh, it's not the most glorious noise, as Helen pointed out. Uh, that was the noise of Ken unblocking the drains so that all of those gallons of water that were stuck up on our roof uh, finally started to flow where they were supposed to flow. And now one last story for the grapevine this morning. Um, we've given this story a name, Brown Rabbit's Big Adventure. Uh, and again, you maybe saw this on the Beaver Family Facebook page. Uh, this on the left-hand side of the screen, this is Brown Rabbit, who belongs to little Gideon, uh, who's Reuben's wee brother, and um, Rachel and Thaniel are his mum and dad. Um, and Brown Rabbit was Gideon's favourite teddy for, is Gideon three? Maybe for the last two years. So for almost all of his life, uh, Brown Rabbit was the teddy of teddies. Um, but a few weeks ago, he went missing. Uh, and Rachel was saying it was starting to get a little bit alarming every night. Where's Brown Rabbit? Where's Brown Rabbit? And they were starting to run out of, uh, oh, maybe he's gone on an adventure. Maybe he's on a walk. Maybe he's on his holidays. But they were starting to run out of uh, excuses to explain why Brown Rabbit wasn't there. They just couldn't find him anywhere. But then one day last week, they were in the Beaver Prayer Garden. And lo and behold, sitting proudly, slightly damply, but proudly, on the thankful cairn, there was Brown Rabbit. So there is Gideon reunited. Ah, oh, isn't it lovely? So um, our thankful cairn has all sorts of stones of all sorts of thanksgivings, all things that we are grateful for. I don't think there has ever been as big a smile or as joyful a thank you as Gideon and the rest of the family on that day where they found brown rabbit sitting there on the thankful cairn. Speaking of the cairns, it's a little um, reminder. Rachel did say, you know, when we were actually looking, when we found brown rabbit and then we were looking at the rest of the stones, we realised um, some of them have been maybe uh, a little bit weather beaten. Some of them have completely faded away. Some of them have maybe had things scribbled on them which weren't necessarily meant with a sort of thankful heart. But this is the uh, picture of what they looked like last summer when they were all brown, uh, brand new. So I thought Brown Rabbit's Big Adventure might be a good little reminder to us. I think it's almost exactly a year since we created those cairns out in the garden. I think it was the start of August last year. So, and quite a lot of the prayers, uh, if you remember, we've got a station for Thanksgivings, where you write on the stone anything that you're thankful for. We've got a places cairn, which is where you pray for the places, uh, countries, hospitals, schools, anything, anywhere that you are praying for. And then we've got a people cairn, where you just put the first name of anybody that you are praying for. All of them are still there. All of them are just looking a little bit weather beaten and faded. And it just made me think it's kind of like that does sometimes happen, doesn't it? Our thanksgivings and our prayers, sometimes as time goes on, they do fade away. Sometimes they do get overwritten by all of the other cares and worries of life uh, that come along as, as life goes on. So would Brown Rabbit's Big Adventure be a good little reminder to us, all of you with an artistic bent, how would it be if we built up the cairns a little bit more 
this August. Uh, when you get home, find some nice pebbles and stones, get creative uh, and scribble some thanks, some places and some people and let's keep building those cairns higher and higher uh, all across our garden.